Hey, this week is a quick update video to how I do my meal planning process inside of Notion. Meal planning and prepping groceries and recipe databases was one of the first use cases that I got really excited about and shared on my channel. So a lot has changed since then. I have a much more sophisticated system. A lot more relations and rollups are working together to kind of keep me more organized. So I'm going to share some of the changes that I've made and how I'm using it today. So here's the meal planning template. First things first, what you need to know is that all of the source databases that we are working with here are tucked way below down here under source. Do not touch. So we've got three databases here, weekly meal plan, recipes, and groceries. Part of the reason that I do this is because I like to embed the databases in a few different ways. So I keep all of the source databases together, tuck them away, don't touch it, leave them there, and then you can mess around with these databases without worrying about accidentally deleting anything. And so let me go through these three different databases that you'll need to know groceries needed. So there's a master grocery database here, some instructions here for you. But essentially, we've got two different views here. One is what we actually need when we go to the grocery store. So that's your grocery list. The other one is the master, which is all of the groceries. So this way I can open up the master and I can go through and check off everything that I need. And then those are going to show up in the grocery list. You can change up the source here. So this is generally the store that I'm going to go to pick this up and you can configure your options and change these up to your most common stores. So feel free to delete any properties that don't work for you. You can delete that by clicking on the three dots, delete or rename them, do whatever you need to do there. You can open up any one of these entries and you'll see if there are any recipes that it's connected to and you can connect those up to your heart's content. I'll show you what that looks like in the recipes database. So this is kind of how we work with the groceries. You can also sort these in different ways as well if you want to sort them alphabetically or by department. So let's say for example, under category, I can sort those so that all the baking stuff shows together, all the groceries, etc. All right, let's close that up. Now we've got the weekly meal plan here. This is the central most important part of this plan, which pulls from the recipes database below. These are a good chunk of the recipes that I use and have I have saved over the years. You're definitely going to want to add your own or delete anything that you're not going to eat. Most of these recipes are vegetarian and vegan, but again, you can feel free to make any adjustments whatsoever. This is a view of all of the recipes here. You can expand to see more. And there's a couple different views here. So favorites, breakfast, lunch, and these are just filtered in different ways. So filter is favorite. And these are just my own personal favorites, but again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go through and you adjust to your heart's content. So this is the one I generally keep it on all just for when I'm looking for inspiration. And then up above, I've got a couple weekly meal plans all ready to go. These three are the most ready and up to date, but you can definitely go and add any more that you like, as many as you like, really. So let's say we're going to create a new one from scratch, new meal plan. You can hit command enter to open that quickly, or you can click on the entry and let's apply this new meal plan template right here. There we go. So you can see all of these items are pre-populated. You'll notice the recipes database below is filtered to this new meal plan automatically. So what we can do is pull recipes in here and I can just click in here and look through and say, oh yeah, let's do the mushroom taco meat. Let's do that one, green smoothie pops. And I can pull in everything that I want to make for this particular week's prep. I'm just pulling in a, a few examples. Now, ideally, when you add your recipes to the recipe database, you are going to connect those recipes up to the grocery list. So let me jump in and show you what I mean. If I click on blueberry pancakes, for example, and I jump into that entry, I can see that these are all the ingredients for this recipe. If I click inside here, you'll see that's actually a connection to the groceries database. I've just called it ingredients. You can call it groceries, whatever works. And if I need to add any more, I can click in here. I can start typing again, flaxseed, whatever, flaxseed oil, and just check any ingredients that go along with that. So that's great. And I can see what meal plans this is connected to. And that automatically uh, connected because I added it to my new meal plan. So jumping back here, I can see here's all the recipes I've added, and that's going to summarize all of the groceries and ingredients needed for those recipes. 
Uh, I don't believe all of these are connected up. So for example, if I go to mushroom taco meat, I have not added those groceries yet. So let's go here and say, I know there's mushrooms, onion, cherry tomatoes. All right, so you'd go through and add all of those ingredients, paprika. That might not, if it's not in there already, you can just create a new page. There you go. So I can see it's in this meal plan. If there's any related recipes too, I can click in here and connect that up to any of the other recipes. So if there's a sauce, for example, that is used for this thing, cuisine, you can, you can choose whether or not you want to add these different uh, properties. So I'm going to jump back into that meal plan here. So I can see they've got these recipes, these groceries, I can make some notes and then I can decide how I'm going to approach this meal plan for the week. Usually I do most of the prep work on Sunday and I can look at the recipes and say, okay, I know that I'm going to need that pancake mix. So I might decide that I want to, to prep that on Sunday. I also, I like to use emojis. I like to put them in line. So prep, pan, cake mix. And of course you can format this just like you would any other text, uh, gray or default. Let's unbold that, there we go. And I might copy this a couple times and say, let's prep the popsicles. Excellent. And then if there's anything else like the cabbage hemp salad, I would probably prep the cabbage salad. Prep the mushroom taco meat. And the idea is that we're doing most of the assembly as we go. So everything's kind of ready to go on Sunday. It's all in containers. And then throughout the week, we're just kind of assembling and reheating. And so back to breakfast over here. What I like to do is just at mention blueberry pancakes. You can always, you know, type it in again, blueberry pancakes, but I like to, if it's already there, I will just add mention it. I know we're going to have the cabbage hemp salad for lunch. All right, and I would just go through and I would add those. And then that gives me a very visual snapshot of everything that we've got going on for the week. Uh, and then you'll notice here, these recipes have already popped up here. Uh, and what I, what I might even do is open up this as a new page, right? So here I am, if I open up the cabbage salad, look up the instructions. As soon as I click off, I'm back into the meal plan and I can get all of this prepped pretty quick and easy. And then I'm back to the meal plan. So if you, as long as you open up in a new page, you'll be able to kind of do everything that you need to do right here. I'm just going to jump back to my meal planning dashboard. So you can see we've got a couple different options here. All right. So that shows you how to create that. And again, you can create it from here, new meal plan, or you can just create a new entry and make sure to apply that template. You'll notice in some of the formatting thing, like the ingredients here, uh, this is actually a text field that's inside snacks and sides. And it's just so that in the board view, it shows up um, just above these ingredients here. So I might delete this extra space here. And so all of these ingredients are pulling from this relation, right? So as long as these recipes are connected up, if I click here, you'll see recipes, it's pulling in the ingredients property, all right? So you'll need to have a little bit of a, a comfort and familiarity with relational databases in Notion. And uh, these rollups are just pulling in all of that. And I'm saying show unique values because that way, if multiple recipes are calling for the same ingredient, we don't need tomatoes to show up twice. We just need it to show up once. And there's my snapshot of all of the groceries that we're going to need to order. And then I can double check depending on which week I've chosen is going to be the current week. So when you are ready to choose the week that you want, um, there's a couple, a uh, couple views. You can view it as a board view here and just see it like this as a snapshot, or you might find it more helpful to view as a table view this week, right? And I can see the whole thing at a glance. And if you hold shift and scroll your mouse across, you can see, all your options here and I can double check these groceries here against my groceries here and make sure that all of those have been checked off or make sure that uh, we don't need them all right and there's your snapshot for the week you have a sense of how long it's going to take all the prep that you want to do on Sunday so this is what's been working so far I'm still going to be um, 
figuring my way out through past these uh, these three four meal plans. As I go, I'll come up with new new recipes and solutions. Again, feel free to add any new recipes whatsoever. If you use the Notion Clipper when you're going through the internet and you find a recipe that you like, you can clip it right into this recipes database and uh, add your own, delete any that you don't like and have some fun with it. I recommend, if you can, setting aside two to three hours to do all of your prepping in one go so that most of your meals are going to be quick assembly. I like to do this on Sundays around 3 or 4 p.m. and that way you're making your Sunday meal at the same time that you're prepping all of the food and veggies for the week to come. Try and do your grocery shopping on the same day every week if you can. It can help to kind of get into that ritual that you sit down, you look at all of the ingredients that you need for the recipes for the week ahead and just make sure that you've got all of those and make a plan to pick up those ingredients if you don't have them on hand. Take notes. As you go through and you make your different meal plans for the week, take note of where things feel a bit annoying or maybe you made too much food or you need to make some adjustments to portions. Sometimes certain recipes may not work super well together for a lunch and dinner combination because uh, maybe they use too many different kinds of vegetables and there's a bit of food waste. So if you've got a big kale soup happening, maybe there's a, a snack kale chips or something like that that you can make with the rest of your ingredients. Pick a couple signature recipes that you're really, really comfortable with. It can be hard when we're making new habits and trying to change the way that we do things and eat healthier. So I don't feel like you have to suddenly reinvent your meal plans. What are some of the recipes that you know you can make pretty quickly and easily? And just make sure to kind of lean on some of those signature recipes and maybe once per week or every couple weeks, you pick a time to try out a new recipe and add something new. But I wouldn't recommend doing five new recipes at a time. Another tip would be to batch create some sauces in advance. So if you know that you've got certain meals coming up that might have a homemade dressing, make a larger batch of it. You can always freeze stuff if you need to. Now, this is not nutritional advice. This is me just sharing the system. I do encourage you to use your own wisdom and knowledge and background to really make this your own. I am by no means a meal planning expert. This is something that I strive to do because I know that I eat better when I do put a plan together and the time that I spend doing that planning up front, it's two to three hours to put together a meal plan and actually do all the prepping and chopping and everything like that, but I'm much more likely to eat better throughout the week if I do it. I welcome your suggestions as well in the comments below. So let me know how you get on with this meal planner. I appreciate that feedback and best of luck with your Notion workspace.